the industry is enormous. I mean, it's enormous. You're talking about um, close to $300 million in revenue just domestically a year. I mean, it, it's incredible, the opportunity. And if, if you just start siloing things out, you're going to be in for uh, an interesting uh, story at some point. Welcome to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. I'm Tina. And I'm Amanda. And we're here to make marketing easier for natural products businesses so you can reach more people and change more lives. Hey guys, welcome back to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. Today we're joined by Billy Jones. Uh, He's the co-founder of Save Naturally. Uh, So thanks for being on the show, Billy. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So one thing that we like to ask all of our guests, um, because most people grow up thinking, you know, I want to be a doctor or a teacher or something like that. Most people don't think that they're going to end up in natural products. So can you kind of just tell us a little bit about your journey into this industry and what you currently do with Save Naturally? I, for one, did not think I was going to end up in the natural product space. Not not in the slightest. Um, I'm originally from Michigan. Uh, natural growing up wasn't necessarily part of our grow up plan, if you will. Vitamins were, yes, of course. Um, but yeah, how I actually stumbled upon it was I've always been entrepreneurial. That's, um, that's been one. I started my own lawn maintenance business when I was nine years old, cutting my neighbor's lawns and things of that nature. So that's just kind of been ingrained in me. And then 2008 came and I'm showing a bit of my age, um, there. Yes, I'm 42. Um, but 2008 came and a friend of mine and I, um, started a men's clothing line and uh, investors pulled out and, you know, as we know, the whole market crash. So that put me in a situation where I needed to, um, reevaluate some things, direction, what am I going to do next? Uh, that sort of stuff. And so I went back to college in Florida, um, for a little bit and it didn't take me very long to be like, no, that this, this is not my path. Personally, to anybody that wants to go to college, please do so. Um, but but for me in particular, um, I was able to to you know get some skills and things of that nature um, going back. Uh, but quickly realized, hey, I, there's something else that I want to be doing here. Um, and then a friend of mine who founded a company um, posted something on Facebook and founded a multivitamin effervescent. And I ended up saying, hey, I'll I'll come work. Are you would you hire me? Uh, I'll be a sales rep. Sure. I'll do whatever you need. And so, yeah, $15 an hour. She's like, will you move to California? I was like, sure. I'll be on, I'll be on the next flight. Got rid of my car, uh, got on a flight, um, had no money in my pocket. And I was like, I don't know where I'm going to sleep. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but she ended up giving me a couch for a little while as well. That's how my natural product story began. Um, and that was at the age of 27. Um, and then from there, I fell in love with the industry. Um, I, I ended up breaking after about eight months working there, I broke away and started, um, a product demonstration company out of LA and then started growing that nationally. Um, between those two things of working on the product manufacturing side and doing the in-store product demo. So I've been in the industry for about 14 years now, 15 years. I saw a lot of the pain points, obviously I saw the product manufacturing side of the pain points and then working closely to the product demonstrations and then working in the retail locations and then talking to end customers. Um, gave me a really full scope of it all. Granted, the demonstration company isn't necessarily a scalable business. It, whoever is doing demonstrations, those businesses, bless you because it is difficult. Um, I, I will not. Um, it, it is difficult managing the schedules and the people and, and all of it. So, But from there, you know, we, we at, at that point, I conceptualized um, how do we streamline uh, you know, the coupon process effectively? And so that's how we got here. Uh, is save naturally. How, how, how do we how do we get savings into customers' hands and drive customers into either trying new products, becoming new brand loyalists to brands um, by being able to pick that up without them needing to do much of a lift at all, and then being able to then eliminate um, that process for the retailer because paper coupons is a nightmare to start with. So um, us being saved naturally, instant cost savings platform, we're eliminating paper product manufacturer paper coupons. But then on the product manufacturing side, the digital coupon aspect of it is being charged an impression to the product manufacturer. 
So if someone doesn't actually pick up the product and purchase it after they digitally click the coupon, the product manufacturer is now having an issue with, I don't even know how this is even working well for me right now. So um, it, we, we set out to solve both those problems effectively. That's amazing. I am so interested in hearing more about how you're working with smaller retailers. I know that's a passion for you. You're a supporter of this. Very passionate about the independent channel. It's who we work with, whether you're an independent retailer or a co-op. Um, you could even be, uh, you know, there's, there's pretty sizable independent um, regional um, um, retailers as well. And so we feel that product manufacturers right now are leaving money on the table. And independents are the bedrock of the whole industry. Um, they're the ones who get the word out. Um, to the customers that they're the ones who, um, at the end of the day, have built these um, conglomerate product manufacturer companies. And at the end of the day, what's currently happening with Food, Drug and Mass and, and others is people are chasing money. That's just kind of reality. Um, and and when that happens, um, as they're chasing Food, Drug and Mass, now they're alienating the independent channel. And once the independent channel gets alienated, the way that it, it tends to do um, once once those companies get big enough, now the independent um, channel has a choice to make: Do we stick with this brand? Do we stick with this product, or do we try and replace it? It generates a lot of revenue for us, so I understand it's a very hard decision for an independent retailer to ultimately make um, on that side of things. And so for us, we're like, "Hey, Mr. Product Manufacturer, while this group and I know you know." It, it, it's business and I understand business and all that other stuff. It's not that you owe the independent channel anything. You are now leaving money on the table because your shopper shops at these locations and you think they shop everywhere, but in all actuality, they don't. They're loyal to their stores. They're loyal to the people that they get educated by um, on, on products. And, and for us, we're like, Hey, let's, we're only going to focus on this channel. If, if a bigger player comes and asks us, hey, will you white label or will you, um, will, will, will you do something similar that you're doing for the independent channel? No, you won't. Done correctly and, and us, we're not, we're not chasing money. The money will make itself at the end of the day. So doing it correctly and doing it with the independent channel, doing it with the co-ops, um, that, that is our goal. And, and we, we, we're not going to move from that stance um, at all. And, and it's on video. So now we can go back and you guys can say, remember when you said this? Uh, <laughs> and we want the product manufacturers to understand, hey, you can actually spend money in this channel. And you can actually now see with our platform in particular, you can see the sales. You can see while a campaign is running on our platform, what your sales look like, which currently isn't happening. They know their orders, but they don't know the sales. And so that's one issue that they have as well. And, and and in regard to um, more omni-channel, we, we want to help the product manufacturers see this, that there is, you are leaving money on the table, um, especially with the one-store retailer and debt wilders. You know, you guys are adding one, one new location. I think it's bringing you guys to either six or seven locations at this point. Congratulations on the new store. Um, by the way, um, I know Chase is working super hard on that and all you guys are. So in any event, um, congratulations to you all on that. But you know, you have these one stores in the middle of nowhere America that just kind of gets left to figure it out for themselves because they don't do enough volume for a product manufacturer. So it's kind of ripe to help disrupt how marketing dollars are allocated, how product manufacturers allocate marketing dollars. And we see that as well because we're like, hey, that one store, though you may not see a ton of volume, it does need support. And you may not be able to give a ton of money upfront, but how we're structuring things on a, on a city or a regional basis allows that product manufacturer now to um, look at it in a wider lens, but still being able to micro-target, if you will, um, in, a, in a certain city uh, so they don't leave money on the table. And that's what um, we really want to uh, help do. So that's what we're, we're finding. And that's why we're passionate about that independent channel, because if the independent channel goes away, um, the product manufacturers, what they don't realize, you're going to lose a uh, uh, revenue generation. And, at, and what's going to happen is now you're going to um, you're going to cannibalize yourself almost. Now you're going to make things way more competitive in your category um, at the end of the day, or even in you know um, whatever you're siloing out at the end of the day. Um, so 
you know, whether you're you're going to be competing for shelf space at Food Dragon Mass, you're going to be competing for eyes on Amazon, you're going to be competing for. So if independents start going away one by one by one by one, you guys are in trouble and you're not seeing that. And then the brokers are in trouble and then the distributors are in trouble and then the point of sale systems are in trouble. And so it's a domino effect at the end of the day. So to make sure that um, we, we keep the independent channel stable, um, it, like that's what we're setting out to do. We, we want to keep it stable, not only for the independent retailers, but everybody that's at play here. Yeah, I think you're spot on that it 1000% is a domino effect. And I think, you know, in the short run, maybe the these brands that are kind of more or less abandoning the independents, um, they might not feel it right now, but they will, you know, probably a lot sooner than they think they will. You made another point um, or, or made me realize another point that I wanted to say as well is, how product manufacturers treat the independent industry is by individual retailer. Instead of looking at the independent landscape and say, hey, we're in, you know, 500, 1,000, 2,000 independent stores and looking at it from that lens of things instead of each individual store is its own thing. And, and that's, and so we're, now we're comparing, you know, Food Drug and Mass or Target or to one individual store. Well, yeah, of course. But if you look at the whole landscape of the independent channel, that is that's that is heavy. That is a, that is a lot of money you're on the table. So sorry, I just want to say that because that that's how it's being looked at in regard to how marketing dollars are being allocated. It's like Whole Foods does this and Amazon does this and and so and Costco does this. But if you look at the whole independent landscape, the whole thing. That you're talking about billions of dollars being saved. A lot of these small stores, you know, they kind of feel like maybe they've been burned by some of these larger brands that have gone into FDM. And they're like, where'd you go? Like, I don't see my reps anymore. And, you know, I feel like I'm kind of just on an island. And it sounds like the, the service that you're offering is almost a way for these manufacturers to kind of bridge that gap that maybe was was damaged a little bit with some of their business decisions and not to say that you know going into fdm is necessarily a bad thing but don't forget about these brands that are these you know these independents that are loyal to you and do good business for you maybe it's not you know at the same scale as you know target but in their local community of you know five thousand people they're the only place to go um and so you don't want to alienate that community. So I think that that's really neat. Um, what have you seen kind of the response from the independents that have started to utilize Save Naturally in their stores? Kind of how has that helped them, um, you know, mend those bridges that might have been kind of damaged by a lot of these companies that maybe they felt like abandoned them? I'll speak frankly. Um, some, of, some of these brands that abandoned the retailers, um, that bridge is burned, from what I know. Um, from my conversations with retailers, they're looking for other product manufacturers to replace those. They're starting to get put on the bottom shelf. They're starting to get UPCs taken away. It's it's slowly shrinking, and and they're all talking to each other. That's the other thing. These independents are all talking to each other, and they're all saying and griping about the same exact thing, same exact brands. Is there a way to save it? I think it's going to take time. I do. They need to show the loyalty again. They need to show the promise again. Um, and if they don't, there are some beautiful brands that focus on independent. And I'll speak of one right now, Blue Bonnet. Blue Bonnet does an amazing job um, focusing on the independent channel. And they have never once, um, they play in all the channels, right? They do it very well. And I'll use them as, this, and people should look at them, honestly. Other brands should look at them, no matter the size of them, and say, "Hey, okay, let's let's look at them and and see how they're doing things." Um, and especially new up and coming brands, um, I, I do think that that Blue Bonnet is is a staple, um, honestly. So that that being said, in regard to our platform and, and what we're seeing, um, I mean, the retailers love our, love our platform and, and what we're able to do at the end of the day, um, and, and that's biased, right? I mean, it's it's. <laughs> um, but it, there, there are some that, that do want to, um, because of the revenue that some of these brands generate, they want to know, hey, how can we hang on to this brand? Because it generates a ton of revenue for 
for us. Um, and so with that, um, you know, we're, we're working our way into some of those bigger brands. There's, there's a lot of um, senior levels and a lot of those companies that have to make those decisions. So that, that takes a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, in, in, in regard to that, th- there are some that there's no turning back right now. Um, they, they may in four or five years, um, but some of them are starting to knock on their door and they're like, no, I remember what you did. And we, we have, you know, now you're going to have to fight for your shelf space back. Um, and what are you going to do for me? You better give me an extremely big discount or you better support me in an enormous way um, because that's the only way you're going to get your shelf space back. And, and that's the thing is that they're fighting back. Um, not, you know, and, and the product manufacturers are like, wait, what are you guys doing? Like, you're fighting back with this now? Like, we generate how much money for you guys? When you don't care, you're just like, it doesn't matter to us. And like, you, you cannot be sold in all these areas and then sold for a lot less and violate your own MET policy and doing all these sorts of things. Um, and then say, hey, we're back. It didn't work out over there. Sorry, it's it's too late. It's you you broke up with me. It's over. Sorry. This brings so much to mind for me as you're talking about these things. But one of the key pieces I'd love to go through is why is it attractive for someone like a Blue Bonnet to put so much um, behind this independent retail channel? I'm thinking things like, okay, your customers don't who are buying this product that are being educated in this store by these salespeople um, aren't going to buy it. The Costco's or the Amazon's, that's not their channel for their health and wellness products. Or maybe there's pricing pressure over there. So trying to get into Walmart, the pricing pressure is crazy. But at the independence, there's margin you can get that you're probably leaving on the table. Testing um, different messages or use cases. Um, for your products can happen. These independent retailers can turn on a dime. So these are a few thoughts that come to my head about why it would be more attractive to stay in this independent retail lane or to give it a lot of attention. Is there anything I'm leaving off of that list or that you want to highlight? I think you nailed it, to be honest. Um, yeah, because it's it's grassroots. You're always at the grassroots, no matter how big you are. Um, because at the end of the day, there's another generation coming right behind you. And so when that next generation comes and you pulled out of your grassroots effort, how do they now adopt your product? How do they start taking your product? Um, when, when mom and dad are no longer buying it or your friends or your cousins or whoever is no longer buying it because it's no longer available at that independent store, or you could, sure, you could buy it online. And, and that's another thing too, right? One of the things that we set out to do in particular is when someone walks into a store, um, for example, they look it up on Amazon to see if it's cheaper. Um, that's where our platform in particular comes into play. We want people to be able to, when they look it up, and let's say it's 50 cents um, uh, less on Amazon or whatever the case may be. We want somebody to go into that store and when they grab it, they walk out this, They walk out of the store with that product versus going into their phone, looking up, looking for a cheaper price and then ordering it um, from Amazon because for with supplements in particular, right? Impulse buys are impulse buys. People are still going to buy it for the most part. Um, and, and Amazon should be exactly, you know, what it's intended to be in its convenience um, at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's for, you know, oh, I don't have time to actually get into the store right now. And I got to order this um, really fast. And that, and that's where the whole Omni channel comes into play is of course you, you play on Amazon too, but don't, don't just, Play on Amazon. Don't just play in Food Drug and Mass. Don't just play um, in, in in the independent channel either, right? Like, and that's you have your marketing well rounded in the Omni channel, and you are going to crush your expectations. You're gonna cr- you're gonna crush what your assumptions and projections ultimately are. And and quite frankly, the investors at the end of the day are going to look at your product and be like, "How are you doing this? What like? Oh wow, okay. Oh, you're focusing on every. Oh, you're doing Omni channel." Got it. You're doing DTC. You're doing you're doing everything. Um, and I understand the DTC piece too because of the sheer information that you get on the customer, right? Um, so that 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 is that is a possible channel. But don't don't violate your map policy though, just to do that. Um, that's that's the thing that um, ultimately comes into play. So for us, right, is being able to now allow that customer to go into the store and leave with that product from the store, um, especially at the channel. So yeah. My question 
what does this look like tangibly in a retail space to implement your product? Just for people that are having a hard time kind of visualizing it, um, can you kind of just explain what this looks like in a store? How it looks in a store is actually we go into the store and we we outfit the stores with our shelf phones. Um, and so there, there are these blue tags right here um, that, that, oops, sorry, that we, we put up. So you'll see that's like $3 off, $1 off, $2 off, whatever the case may be. And this is actually part of, this is free. Our platform is free to every retailer. And so um, instead of having you know, books of coupons on the shelf or um, you know paper coupons, whatever the case may be, now a customer can walk in, a loyalty customer in particular, can just pick up the product, go to checkout, enter their phone number, credit card terminal, and you'll see the savings instantly. Um, on their receipt um, and, and at checkout. So it's uh, it's just streamlining that whole process. And then uh, what we do with the retailers, we set up ACH um, with the retailer. So we eliminate the clearinghouse completely, set up ACH with the retailer. So now you're being reimbursed faster um, for all the, um, all the products being purchased. And then we, we have a reporting, right? Because we plug right into uh, the point of sale system. Right? We're, you know, we're integrated with ECRS in particular. Um, which I know uh, Debtwilers uses. And so uh, for us... That's a big deal for a lot of independent retailers, that that point of sale. So Yeah, exactly. They're an amazing point of sale system. Um, And of course, I recommend it because we're integrated with them. Our our, our platform works very well um, with their platform. So from there, right, we um, uh, we plug in nicely and uh, we get everything kind of set up on on our end and um, it literally takes us, depending on how many stores, your stores, you, you know, um, being six to seven locations, uh, it, it would probably take us max 30 minutes to get all the stores configured in. Um, and then we set up ACH and then uh, away that store goes, to be honest with you. And then what we do is we talk to the product manufacturers. We say, hey, here's a new retailer in this region. Um, when you run in this region, this store will be a part of that. Um, campaign and then we go into the stores like i said we put the shelf tags up um and so that way customers get used to um the blue tags right um we may change it at some point but right now we like being the blue tags if a retailer had an existing loyalty program would this be something that they could add on top of that it stacks and so it just makes for that um end customer right they'll they'll get their however the rewards work and and whether they're getting you know, cash back on related purchase or whatever the case may be, it stacks right on top of that. So it ends up being a marketing tool, an additional marketing tool for a retailer as well to say, hey, you also get uh, savings on any blue tag um, when when you sign up for our loyalty program. So that that's that's another side of it too, is being able to get more loyalty members um, on it on on uh, a retail for retailers. So. Yeah, and I think that that's something that a lot of these smaller independent retailers struggle with. Um, you know, a lot of them don't have very large marketing budgets. And so I think something like this could be very advantageous to implement, especially if it's free. Like, that sounds like a no-brainer for a lot of them um, to be like, hey, we can pass along these savings to you. And, you know, we, you know, however you want to spin it, into your customers to, to make it sound, um, appealing to them. But, you know, again, going back to, um, you know, maybe they're not getting these huge discounts directly from the manufacturer, or maybe their co-op budget is next to nothing, or they don't do any co-op, um, which that's a whole nother thing of leaving money on the table from the retailer's perspective. But this is kind of a way to make up for, for some of those dollars that might be left elsewhere underutilized. And, and that's what we set out to do. The product manufacturer, um, they they pay our, they, they, we don't even charge until the product gets purchased. So we have skin in the game. And so then the, they're responsible, the product manufacturer is responsible for the subsidy amount and then our fee, which is an extremely low fee, but it's based on the product being purchased. So, and then, yeah, we just plug again, right? Our platform um, is free to the retailer. So um, it's, a, it's, it's an all, it's supposed to be an all party win platform um, because it's as we work with other retailers and things that nature and then we have a phase two and phase three and phase four which just only makes it even more sticky and makes the retailer 
like want to use our platform even more. The phase two, there will be a paid version of it for the retailer, but now we're going to get into um, a better way to market to your own customer, your loyalty customer. So we'll, we could dive into that at some point. Don't want to give away too much um, because it's still, we still got to get it. We're still getting it all developed and things of that nature, but to target them um, as well. So yeah, phase one, it's just free. Just get, get more savings into a customer's hand um, and, and, and see how that goes. Um, and it's, it's going pretty well. I mean, we're bringing on new retailers are now just, it's like, okay, 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 pump the brakes for a second. Um, but then product manufacturers are now saying, oh, this makes a lot of sense. This is, this is logical, and it's, but it's very disruptive um, at the end of the day. But it's logically disruptive. So that's, we, we, we like that compliment. I think something that I found that that is appealing to this uh, this whole concept to me as as a retailer is you you're in the industry like you're you're all in it's not like you're just some rando software developer that has no experience in the industry that is like looking to make a quick buck it's like this is what you're passionate about and so I think that that speaks volumes to both the manufacturers and the retailers to know it's like, this is for everyone's mutual benefit. Um, and I, I love that. Um, I think that if I'm able to pick up on that within just a few minutes of talking to you, I think that the sky's the limit for you. So best of luck. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I, hey, I, I'm glad you picked up on it because yeah, it's, um, I've been all in since I got into the industry. Honestly, I was like, wait, more people need to experience this. And if I had a choice, between a conventional product, and, and it comes down to price a lot of times, right? Between natural and conventional at the end of the day. And if I had these two side by side, and I saw one at $3.50, and I saw one at $2.50, but then I saw that I could save an additional 50 cents or a dollar on the natural one, and, I, and, I, and it's coming down to price for me, I'm grabbing that natural one every single time. For me, I'm grabbing the natural one regardless, just because... You know, uh, just being in the industry, right? So it's just like, I'm going to spend a little more for my long-term health. That's just me though, right? Um, but there, people tend to not shop that way. Um, the, the, the vast majority of individuals. And so, and there are, and everybody's on a budget at the end of the day. We all know that. And so that's what we wanted to do. We want people to say, I'm going to go grab this product because I know it's better for me. I haven't tried it and it's going to make more sense. So how do we now start making people more loyal? to the industry of the natural product industry um, and start picking it up when it isn't just on sale as well. So that, that that's what we really want to do is help people live and maintain a healthy lifestyle on top of, of the other benefits that we can give to the retailer and product manufacturer and then the end customer too. You talked about data and I'm so curious about getting some of that data. It sounds like you're definitely providing it for different manufacturers so that they can understand the buyers, what's happening in that retail store. Do you also give that to the independent retailers? Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> Tell me. I so, I'm a data nerd and I want to know like what can I understand about my customer journey so that I can market more effectively. And they can feel more like I know them, just like when they walk into my store. So I, I want to know, how are you helping me do that? I can't get too far into it. I, can, I, I <laughs> want to right now. I really do. But I can't get too far into it um, because we are currently de developing a tool um, for the retailer to be able to communicate directly to the retailer. And that's how, how we're doing it, right? Like, so it's... It, how we do it can't get too far into that, but being able to say, but it's around like by um, uh, consumers buying um, actions, right? I'm I'm guessing that you're getting some insight there, and then you can market appropriately. Yeah, and that's the thing: being able to have retailers market specifically, being able to like if I'm a customer and I have someone talking to me directly about what they know I like. Are you kidding me? You have my eyes and ears without question. I'm like, wait, how do you know this? You care about me? That's cool. All right. All right. Cool. Like, I want to get more of this. I want, I want to opt into this. And, and that's just me speaking for myself. 
um, without it being all creepy and big brother things that nature and feeling like, hey, this is ugh, like, oh man, you know that about me? Like that's gross. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's more it, make it like we want to make it thoughtful. We want to make the customer experience thoughtful and 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 feel good um, and not feel all big brother or yeah, you know this or that about me. But I do want to I do want to talk on one of the questions that you had earlier too about um, that company. If you guys have one more minute in, in regards to Costco, it is a marketing channel. Like it is the best, it's one of the best ways if you can get into Costco. Great, do it. Because what it does at the end of the day, it helps support your independent customers as well. It helps support everything else because you, you may have a ton of SKUs, right? And, and there's a lot of products out there that have a ton of SKUs and you have to do something in massive bulk at the end of the day too. And most of the time you aren't a mainstay on their floor. You are, you, you may be, you know, in a region, you may be region to region every once in a while, um, but it's a great opportunity to get eyes on your product. Um, but, and what that can actually do, and we've seen it is when customers now, because they're not going to get certain products, but it's a great marketing opportunity um, when they go into the stores now and they're like, oh, I saw it at Costco. Oh, they don't have it at Costco. Well, I'm going to grab it here. Um, so it, it is, it's an opportunity and people should treat it as such, treat it as the marketing opportunity that it actually is, because that's what it is. And, and take advantage of that marketing opportunity. You don't know how long it's going to last dumping all your eggs in that basket and saying, okay, we're going to dump this amount of money. And then all of a sudden you no longer are being sold in that Costco and you dump all that effort there. You still got to support the other channels. You, you, just, you have to, you see all the time, you'll see, you'll go into Costco, you'll see the case stack one month. And other than like the cheez its and the and the goldfish and the, and there's certain things that are always there. But in regards to the natural channel, um, then there's a couple products that stay forever in the natural channel as well. Um, but in large part, not so much. And they'll they'll move them out. Um, it'll be temporary. Oh yeah, we'll do this with you for six months or however long, um, or until we sell through. But it's it's a great market. Excellent. I love hearing that for a couple of reasons. First, it's a multi-pronged approach to, especially when you're trying to get new products out there, but understanding that you're unlikely to stay. There's such a small percentage of those types of health and wellness products end up staying in that Costco market. So I love hearing you say, don't put all your eggs in those baskets. It's a marketing opportunity to drive to these independent retailers. So it's product recognition recognition right branding yeah at the end of the day it is and so someone may get educated at the independent store and then they shop at costco as well and so then they grab something similar or, or they don't at the end of the day right and so they you got to keep everything it's just like us right we're we're each vertical right here right amanda's vertical tina's vertical i'm vertical and that's exactly how it needs to be thought of independent vertical costco vertical dtc vertical and 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 that's what rounds out your omni channel there is the industry is enormous. I mean, it's enormous. You're talking about um, close to three hundred billion dollars in revenue just domestically a year. I mean, it, it's incredible the opportunity. And if, if you just start siloing things out and you just live in that silo, oh, you're you're, you're going to be in for uh, an interesting uh, storm at some point. All right, so let's do some rapid fire. Um, who do you kind of keep up with in the industry to kind of stay on top of your game um, with latest trends and um, kind of what's going on in the industry? I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I'm not on any other social media. Um, uh, the founder of IQ Bar, um, also the founder of I1, those guys say some really, um, some really interesting stuff. Uh, and so... Yeah, in, in regards to the pulse, um, a lot of trade shows and and just yeah, it, a lot of communication with retailers and product manufacturers. That, that's how I really stay in. How are you communicating to the retailers and the manufacturers? Is it a one to one kind of situation, or are you um, finding some gathering spots for them? It, it's it's one on one. At the end of the day, <laughs> we we learn a ton just by. You know, the, the initial conversation with a retailer to um, sales conversation to um, start onboarding uh, a retailer or to start onboarding a product manufacturer. Uh, we 
and that's where we get a ton of insights from that. Um, wow, we have a lot of insights <laughs> uh, that we, you know, obviously we're, we're quiet on, on most of them because it's just we're, we're, we're glue at the end of the day. Um, and it's like, it's keep on, keep on making us better at the end of the day. You got to listen to your customer. Yeah. Um, so what do you think that most people in the natural products industry would like to change about marketing? Depends on if you're a retailer or a product manufacturer. Let's do both. I'll speak for the independent channel right now. Um, they, they want to be able to, you know, bring more money, right? Like how, how can we, um, like from product manufacturers at the end of the day. And that's, and that's what we really want to set out to do is we want to get power back to the, the independent um, retailer himself. Um, it, there's, a, there's a channel here where independent retailers can generate revenue right from the product manufacturers, honestly. And, and being able to do that, being able to tap that um, is going to be extremely valuable um, for, the, uh, for the existence of the industry as well, to be quite honest with you. It's not just shut selling products. And so being able to generate revenue marketing dollars where it's like, hey, here's how many loyalty members we have. We have this many loyalty members. And so we can reach 18, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 people. There's one, one retailer that, that we have. They have 350,000 loyalty members. Um, it's incredible, right? And so and 110,000 are active or opted in, right? I mean, it's email. So there's opportunity, right, everywhere um, to generate revenue. For, for the retailers, just being able to, you know, do we have the right people in place and this, that, and the next thing? Um, do we have to outsource this, that, this, that, and the third? And how much is that ultimately cost us? So for the product manufacturer, you need to stop marketing. Uh, you need to stop delegating how you delegate your marketing dollars. Stop going store by store. Stop siloing out and, and you will see your gross revenue and your bottom line increase um, because it, what, what it really comes down to too right is is our platform is our platform in particular how do we lower the, the customer acquisition cost for the retailer and the product manufacturer our platform has the ability to keep which right now almost cannot happen with the paper coupon keep a product manufacturer in the block that's what our platform can ultimately do for a individual purchased cliff bar at a dollar sixty nine. So that's and, and that's what a product manufacturer ultimately wants to see. Can you do that for me? Can you convert a new customer and lower my customer acquisition costs? Can you do that? And if you can, great, you have my ear. Now show me. That you can. And so that that's where we're at right now. And so yeah, it's um, th those two things. Um, I think yeah, we can help in both those um, in both those arenas as well. So that's what we're aiming to do. Very interesting answers. I love it. Um, what What do you think um, is the biggest challenge that this industry is going to face in the next three to five years? Um, survival um, it is is really the bottom line. Is what it really comes down to, and and it and it, and it comes down to um, are the product manufacturers actually going to wake up and see as you get bigger that um, you now are. Hey, we, we can look at this historically, by the way. We can look at these brands that got acquired by big companies. And and not only did they turn their back on independence, but when they chased the dollar, it didn't work. And some of these brands had to buy, the, the sellers of these companies had to buy their brand back. That's mind-blowing. That's how big of a fail these these big conglomerate companies, when they got into the market, they had to sell it back, probably at a discount, to the the original owner. Well, talk about a fail, right? Talk about a fit. Not for the owners. The owners walked away making their money. The founders, and then they bought it back at probably a pretty decent discount because the conglomerate did not know what to do with it, and they thought it was just going to work because they thought the shopper was just going to buy it because hey, we we now have control of this. That part is mind blowing to me. So this is historical, right? We've seen it. We've seen this play out. We see what's happening. Don't make the same mistake. If you keep chasing the dollar, though, the survival of independence is at stake, right? Stop chasing the dollar. Understand that you will make more money 
far more money. That's what this is about for you. And it's not actually about, right? Because it is. At the end of the day, you raise money, you have different stakeholders at play, you have different, you have different voices, your board might be weighted in a direction that isn't favorable, and you could be ousted as a CEO. You could be, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, that founders ultimately do to raise money to get to the next step that ultimately puts them in, in a compromised situation. And they need, for one, you need to do a better job with your board. So I'll say that um, when you're raising money and make sure that it's weighted in your favor to maintain your vision and your direction. So I will say that. Um, and then, and the next thing I'll say is, yeah, um, when, you, when you're chasing the dollar, just know that the, 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 the industry that got you to where you're at at the end of the day, you will lose it. You're going to lose a ton of money at some point. You're going to, because once you turn your back on them, uh, it's going to be hard to get it back. Yeah, because like you said earlier, they talk. Yeah, they, they all talk. They all talk and they all go to the same. They go to Soho. They go to Maho. They go to Positively Natural Trade Show. They go to the Infra Trade Show. They And they all talk to each other. They all, they all and, and there's other cohorts that are being developed right now for independents to go communicate even more with each other. But but it, we, we all should be working together right now. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, whether you're an infra, whether you're an NCG, whether you're an ECRS, whether you're a spins, whether you're a, a save naturally, is is finding um, people that you can that like-minded individuals that are that are going after the same goal. Don't view them as a competitor, though you you may be able to in some in some instances. Um, but being able to now instead of working independently, start working closer together. Not only will you save the independent industry, the independent industry will hit a gas pedal and people will start wanting to dump money into the industry. They really will. Um, and so bringing all those key pieces, players in the industry right now that have their, um, you know, that, that do their own thing very, very well, uh, bringing all those, you know, kind of together to, to tighten it up a little bit, right? Um, <clears throat> so, and, and, and doing it uh, at the sake of what, what, is, what could be lost. What do you think is some low hanging fruit that natural products businesses can kind of grab a hold of to get some quick wins in their businesses today? The independent channel. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I have this conversation a lot with, with my team as well. And I was like, you know, what's crazy is the independent channel is the low hanging fruit. And it's, it's like one of the biggest money generators. If you like, if you look at the whole landscape, it's one of the biggest generators. And I'm like, I, and I want to go play with them because at the end of the day, the owners of these stores are the owners and the founders, or it's being handed down to a second or third generation. And I want to see that survive. Uh, like, so, so for me, right, you're, you're missing out on the low hanging fruit, which is the independent channel, honestly. Um, um, and, and so that's a little, I mean, I talk about it all the time, so I'm glad you said that. What's the low-hanging fruit? It's really basic. It really is. It's an independent channel. And it's not low-hanging. I mean, everybody thinks it is, but it's not. And it's like, well, if you go one store by one store by one store, sure. But if you look at the whole landscape, oh, smoke. That is yeah. not low-hanging fruit at all. How do you think everybody got to, got to where they're at or was able to sell to a bigger conglomerate? Yeah, they're the, they're the boots on the ground doing doing all the selling for you. They do it. They do. It, it is it is the easiest marketing possible. It, it 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 truly is getting your product on the independent shelves and then just give them some support. Are you kidding me? It you will you will see a very very nice business level. So if people want to get in touch with you, Billy, um, you know, pick your brain or, you know, learn more about your products, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah. Um, email b.jones at savenaturally.com. Website is savenaturally.com. Uh, um, that, yeah, that's my direct, um, way, direct way to get, get in touch with me. So. And we'll have links for all of that in the show notes, so. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your time, Billy. Um, just a pleasure speaking with you. I think our audience is really going to enjoy this. And best of luck to you as you continue to grow your business. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thanks so much for listening to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. We hope you found this episode to be super helpful. Make sure you check out the show notes for any of those valuable resources that we mentioned on today's episode. And before you go, we would love for you to give us a review, follow, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you're listening today. And make sure you join us for our next episode where we give you more marketing tips so that you can reach more people and change more lives. 